I'm standing here in front of the state of Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources. I just said F you, asking some questions. It makes no service by you. F I don't care. Did you just say F you to him? I did. And then another official said she's going to call the police. Appreciate you turn that off. You're going to call the police? I told you to turn it off. I've been arrested in taste, so I'm a little bit on it. But emergency proclamation is a soft term for martial law. And they're saying we can't take pictures or video from the highway. Oh, they'll arrest you if you don't get out of there, and they'll retaliate. This is my boat on fire in the harbor. That's your boat on fire? Someone lit your boat on fire, basically. Yeah. If I had hidden cameras, he would have full-on hit me. There may be a way for me to help you with the hidden camera thing. You have a sock. I'm going to remove myself from being upset Okay. before worse things happen. If I give you some equipment, you think you'd do it there tomorrow? Oh, yeah. The undercover cameras you've seen us use in the past, both in these videos and in our master classes, are now available for sale. Go to our website, o'keefemediagroup.com, click on Covert Camera Store, and you can buy the button camera. Buy it, go get the footage, send it to us, and we'll pay you for it. Now enjoy O'Keefe Undercover in Lahaina, part two. After we released part one of our undercover investigation in Lahaina, showing how the emergency proclamation declared by the governor of Hawaii prohibited photography and journalism alongside the burn zone, which resulted in a lawsuit between OMG and the governor of Hawaii, we received tips and messages from hundreds of locals in Hawaii looking for us to tell their stories about how this crisis is playing out on a variety of levels. This included a lack of ability to get resources from the federal government locally, locals unable to get inside the burn zone, and a potential land grab by the state. We'll be following up in a series of video reports on Lahaina in the coming weeks. Today, we continue to report on the First Amendment and tensions that are deep-rooted in Hawaii as we track one man's interaction with local officials at the Department of Land and Natural Resources and how the state itself is struggling with the deep and long-standing issues regarding the Kingdom of Hawaii being under U.S. control. While our reporters were speaking with members of the Red Cross and FEMA, we came across a local man whose boat was apparently lit on fire and who took issue with what he characterized as the martial law which was instituted under the governor's proclamation 127A. The man said he's had some issues dealing with officials at DNLR, Department of Natural Land Resources in Malai Harbor in Walaku, just south of Lahaina. And then I got arrested. I think I got arrested while salvaging my vessel. You got arrested while salvaging a... Who did, who did that? A state trooper? D. What is it? Department of... of uh, uh, it's, it's don't care. It's there in law enforcement division of DLNR. They have the guns and the tasers. The man, who we happened to be recording because we were wearing a hidden camera, told us he could potentially get some interesting conversations on tape if he had a hidden camera. If I had hidden cameras, he would have full-on hit me. He's already pressed up his chest against me twice in public. So I need to come in the office. Come in the office. Not knowing if the man was credible, we offered to give him a camera and see what he's been seeing with our own eyes. There may be a way for me to help you with the hidden camera thing. If I give you some equipment, you think you'd do it there tomorrow? Oh, yeah. We showed up to the office and spoke with Paul Sansano, the district manager of the Maui County District Office of DNLR. Sure enough, Paul was not happy to see the citizen. Okay. What is this about? The seizure of my property. Wait outside. Are you with him? Yeah. Get outside. Kicking us out? No. Oh. Just okay. that my staff shouldn't be involved. Okay. In All right. Bullshit. Okay, what is it now? I haven't had any forfeiture documents of any of my property, like the kayaks that were stolen off of my vessel. My boat was never posted by anyone. I don't know that. Troy Atwood went aboard my boat and tried no, to stop, okay? The boat is gone. It's burned already. It's down. That's, that's my you home. Burned. You burned. Well, you lost your home. What yeah. can I tell you? So did thousands of you other people. You ordered it to be towed by lost their home for a fire. Yes. The man said he lost his boat in the fire and was told that a lot of people lost their homes. The DNR official, Paul Sansano, almost assaulted him for talking about his situation. You have a stop. We watched tensions rise between the two people as the Kingdom of Hawaii was brought up a couple times and the two men discussed which one of them is truly Hawaiian. You don't follow the rules, yeah? You think that you're an exception, then so be it. This is the Kingdom of Hawaii, I'm going to treat you as an exception. You know what? I got your kingdom of Hawaii thing, yeah? Yeah. Are you Hawaiian? 
Are you practicing to be here? What does it matter if he's Hawaiian or not? I'm just curious. Well, because he claims to be under the rules and regulations of the Kingdom of Hawaii. This is a theme we heard a lot about on the ground in Hawaii, as many Americans just do not realize how deep-seated this tension is. While Hawaii is an American state, Lahaina is and was the capital of the Kingdom of Hawaii, and many people feel strongly about their heritage and where they came from. The district manager cursed off the man, apologized, and said if he didn't remove himself from the situation, worse could happen. Makes no service by you. Uh, I don't care. Did you just tell him, did you just say fuck you to him? I did. Do you work for the state? Do you, uh, do you work for the state of Hawaii? Sir? Yes. Do you work for the Department of Land and Natural Resources, yes. state of Hawaii? You just told a citizen fuck you? Well, that's because I'm upset, so... That was wrong of me to say that, okay. being upset. So I'm going to remove myself from being upset okay. before worse things happen. What, what worse thing could happen? That's for me to know. Okay. Then a man named Robert Troy Abreu appeared, and our cameraman showed up to get some answers. Yeah, I was just um, asking about the guy there who just spoke. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, did, did your supervisor, what's his name? Paul? Yeah. Yeah. He just said, f*** you. Uh, what? To, 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 to us. Who are you guys associated with? Who am I associated with? No, I mean, I don't know why you guys are here. I don't know my, what, my name is James. I have no idea what, what happened here. Another official asked us to turn off the cameras and told us that we, quote, can't use the footage in court. What? My name is... Appreciate you turn that off. We have a right to record. <clears throat> you can't use that in court. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a journalist. I don't care. You don't care that I'm a journalist? No, I don't care, but I want that turned off. It was unclear what the official meant by that, as were journalists publishing a documentary on the Internet and not in court. Then the officials called the police on us, which was the second time that people tried to use law enforcement in an attempt to squelch photography and journalism, which is a protected activity under the First Amendment. Well, what if I what if I um, what if I don't want to turn it off? You're gonna call the police? Yeah, I told you to turn it off. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna call the police. We know we're just scratching the surface and telling these stories, but OMG seeks to shed some insight on the tensions, the culture, the emergency proclamation, and anything that's hidden behind public view, so that all of America can see what's actually happening. If you have information please contact us on our website, O'KeefeMediaGroup.com, and submit a tip or story, or just DM us on Instagram or X, formerly known as Twitter. Stay tuned for our ongoing series on the tragedy in Lahaina.